Hi, I'm Dr. Kalika. I'm a clinical director of New York Dynamic Neuromuscular Rehabilitation. And today I wanted to talk about low back pain, herniated disc. So um, uh, in the past 10 years, not only the doctors are convinced, but uh, the patients already know that uh, magnetic resonance imaging and MRI is rarely necessary and rarely brings us clinically useful information for people with fresh herniated bulge disc and sciaticus because uh, unless the patient needs a surgery that information has not very little clinical value. So um, back about eight years ago I have learned a technique with ultrasonography that is very compatible to magnetic resonance imaging and that's a screening technique for herniate for discs whether they are bulge herniated or um, 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 any variation of those uh, slip disc can be seen on diagnostic ultrasonography. Of course, magnetic resonance imaging is giving us better picture, and if the patient needs a surgery or an injection, that that the MRI would be necessary. But most of the people, I would say, 90% of people with herniated disc, bulging disc, don't really need that. And therefore, this clinical method, especially today with this new monster uh, Canon machine, which is uh, uh, humongous, if you could see, has a lot of power, great uh, hardware, and fantastic resolution, has really become relevant. So, uh, just about uh, the reason I wanted to record this video is because I had a patient, and this patient came with um, sciatica pain radiating to the buttock and the leg. And I imaged, um, I imaged the patient, and and we saw, and this is what we saw. Um, let me just shut off the light. So this is transabdominal view of L5 S1. What you see here, this is anterior. The abdomen is here. The spine is here. This is uh, abdomen compressed with the probe, and this round structure right here is the disc all the way this round structure this is the canal this is the spinal cord this is the posterior elements ligament nuca and these are the nerve roots and what we saw is this large uh, posterior lateral protrusion that decreases the foramen here and then I did a comparison um, comparison with L4 so this is L4 and this is L5 S1 and this is L4 L5 and we, uh, first of all you could see how this segment looks different. You could see that the annulus fibrosus is really well preserved like this line here. There's much less degeneration through the disc, through the annular fibers of the disc and the space between, um, between the, for, in the foramen is much better. Also the canal is larger here. So then I measured the left and right and um, of the nerve roots and you could see that the B is larger than the A. This is 0.4, this is 0.29. So this is really clear, crystal clear uh, imaging of herniated disc compressed in L5S1 um, nerve root. So now we're gonna demonstrate how we do it. So this is transabdominal view of our subject. This is not the patient that the images we showed you before. This is someone from the office with a nice, uh, very, very skinny belly, which is easy to penetrate with the, the ultrasound. So this technique has limitations. Uh, so right now we see, we see the cell 5S1. Right here, and unfortunately there's also quite a lot of changes here in this disc. You can see this kind of hyperechoic white material and the disc has uh, degenerative fibers and the rim of the, of the annulus, the disc here, is very fibrotic, it's thickened so this is bulge disc, obviously even though our subject never really had a sciatica but I know I had some back pain before so this is L5S1 uh, this is 50% of the technique, the other 50 is done on the patient on the side, so we see it from the back. And if we move on to to the adjacent segment, which is L4, L5, 
mm -hmm. right here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could see that this segment is better, not perfect, but better. You could see how how uh, flat this rim of the annulus. Uh, there's still degeneration in L5 is four, but the foramen's are normal, so more or less this is um, a, um, a better segment than L5 is one on this person. We see iliac arteries right here, so this is how we know we're on L4, L5. And the beauty of this compared to the MRI that if I sit this patient and I, I will uh, ask the patient to bend, I could see um, the protrusion become larger, which is not possible with MRI because MRI is static. Uh, so all in all, uh, if the patient doesn't require surgery, uh, it's a really quick um, uh, clinical tool that allows us uh, precision because oftentimes these uh, herniated discs are not always very clear and confirming that there is a herniated disc and matching that with the clinical uh, history is very important. Thank you very much.